Thank you. Very Thank much. you very much, Ricky, for that uh, introduction. Uh, yes, the topic that I'm going to speak on is road traffic crashes in Indian cities. It is design, and it has to do a lot with design and planning of cities. And if you look at WHO statistics now, or in fact for last five years they have been writing that worldwide actually the road traffic injury has become a major public health concern. 1.2 million people die in road traffic crashes all over the world. And of course the burden is much higher in uh, low income countries or Asian countries and African countries. And this is where we are going to have the major urbanization taking place now in 21st century. And I'd like to actually focus my uh, showing some, of course the focus is going to be Indian cities, but I think as this group of experts that we are here, the architects and the planners, it has a lot to do with them. How we have, we have been designing our cities and how we have been uh, dealing with our built environments. So first, uh, I'd just like to point out some very stalking um, figures from Indian, India. This is for overall India's uh, number of deaths, 1960 to 2010. And I think what is very striking here is that uh, up to mid, early 80s, mid uh, 80s, uh, the traffic crashes were increasing. They were increasing at a pace of 5% per year. And after that, now we see uh, beyond 2000, it has, in fact, not just the absolute numbers, but the rate has also increased. And what is striking is if we try to juxtapose a few other things, what has happened, it is actually mid 80s that our car industry becomes open and we start producing small car, Maruti, in, in um, great numbers. But 2000 and beyond, uh, in fact, mid-90s onwards, there is a heavy investment in improving transport infrastructure. And I think this is what is very, something which is pointing us as an expert, what are we doing that the improvement, the expansion program has been accompanied with this increasing growth rates. Fatalities are uh, normally 5% only underreported, not heavy underreporting. But uh, worldwide, we have this understanding that injury accidents are heavily underreported. So if you try to understand the burden of road traffic injuries, about we, the estimated numbers are about uh, 160,000 people are dying. Serious injuries, you can see, are 30 times more than that, and minor injuries, 50 times more than that. So some estimates, not very detailed studies, but there have been some estimates which are showing that. There have been, this is actually accounting to about 3% of our GDP, loss of 3% of our GDP per year. So it's both the health burden and what is also again very striking is that most people who are dying or getting affected by road traffic injury is the most productive age group. It is not the very young and not the very old. And it is the people who have actually overcome all childhood infectious diseases. And it is the environment where this is, they are dying. Now if we focus our urban areas, about 50% of all reported um, deaths are taking place in urban areas. India is only today 30% urbanized, but again, this, uh, graph here is showing, you know, the numbers in two time periods, 2001 and 2006. And we've tried to understand that what is happening in uh, these million plus cities, all these cities have million plus population. What actually comes out very striking is, leaving out just two or three cities, everywhere else, from 2001 to 2006, number of accidents have increased sometimes by two times or at least one and a half times. The second striking feature here is that if I look at the end of the graph here, the cities which are named there are these, these are not a megapolis, these are not our congested major big cities. These are small cities, Merat, Agra, Faridabad, Vijayawada, these are not even three, four million cities. 
So what's going on in these small cities that we are just, you know, the number of deaths have increased two times, three times, four times there. So this is, and again, no detailed studies are available, but first guess estimates are for many of these cities, the small cities, the medium-sized cities, they are close to our major national highway system. And since the expansion of our national highway system, undivided roads becoming divided roads, two-lane roads becoming four-lane roads and six-lane roads, that's where we are killing many more people now. A uh, little more details on a uh, few case study cities that we have looked at, what's happening in comparing Mumbai, Delhi, and a representative medium-sized city quota where we could have very detailed data. And again, this shows that if you look at all three cities, the majority, of course, is pedestrian. And for pedestrian, in fact, one interesting number that I have looked at, if we look at London, New York, Mexico City, Johannesburg, all these cities actually substantial share. In London, 30% people inside the city who are dying are pedestrians. In New York City, the number is about 45%. So overall, we have a large number of pedestrians are the ones who are getting uh, exposed to uh, traffic crashes. And also the burden is being, it is to the people outside the car, not inside the car. Children are underrepresented in uh, fatal crashes. Uh, old people are overrepresented in many of our cities. And most crashes are away from the junction. They are mostly at mid blocks. So these are some of the differences that we observe as compared to the Western cities. Now, very quickly, because I have, I guess, only one and a half minutes now. So with 30 seconds each, I would like to show you some typical case studies in terms of what is happening. The first one is more to do with urban planning. This is a map of Delhi. And all the little stars are showing our low-income settlements, the informal settlements, the slums. So first striking feature that you see here is they are spread all over. These are the people where majority of the people are walking to work. What we have done by policy now in last five to 10 years, more than 70,000 households have been moved out of the city to make way for some development projects including metro projects, but other development projects also. So what has happened? All non-motorized trips get converted to motorized trips. The exposure to high-speed traffic increases, time poverty of women increases, and opportunity for self-employed and business reduces. So I don't have time to get into that, but this kind of planning is contributing to now more uh, traffic crashes. Then I have listed out how actually not just accessibility and a lot of other things have also been affected. Second case study, because the, in the planner's head, in the experts, congestion is the major thing that we need to solve in many places. And one of the solutions that all world over that traditional traffic engineers, civil engineers have done, let's convert signalized junction to unsignalized junction because that speeds us traffic. So we did a very careful study before and after a junction was converted from signalized to unsignalized. We looked at what was happening to pedestrians and what uh, changes it brought to pedestrian risk. So now uh, the, these are some of the solutions which have been uh, uh, actually implemented in the city. Uh, great separated junctions and you see how it ends up getting used because the bus stops right there and people start running across on this fast speed roads now. Foot over bridges, which is five to six meters high, always has low usage. So uh, in this study, we found that, of course, uh, in the vehicle speeds increase. 22% people accept high risk, and despite foot over bridge or subway, they continue to cross on the road. So when you have this situation, obviously it is not surprising that number of accidents also keep getting uh, increased. And then we looked into more details of what we are doing in terms of our uh, junction planning. Obviously, very low consideration given to how long people have to wait. And the core correlation, we found the longer people are expected to wait, the more risk-taking behavior takes place. They start running across, not caring about the red light. Another a case study now 
that a small bus corridor has been constructed. And here, a lot of interventions went into uh, looking into specific requirements of bus commuters, of pedestrians, and bicycles. So complete restructuring of the city took uh, of the street took place. Segregated bicycle lanes, bus stops close to the junction, how people access the bus stops. A lot of detailing on traffic calming, speed slow down the traffic where it is going to mix with bicycle traffic, exclusive bicycle lane. And uh, again, more details went into lighting and signal design. And first, when we started monitoring this project, it's been three years now, and I would just show you the final. Initially, all the bicycle deaths disappeared from the section. Pedestrian deaths continued, pedestrian and bus accidents. Further interventions done, traffic calming and speed control measures inside the bus lane. And this started giving a major, major impact that, in fact, now, uh, with um, speed reducing measures inside the bus lane, the bus speeds are under control. Number of deaths in 2009, no fatal death was observed on this small section, which used to observe at least on an average 10 fatal crashes. 2010, again, there have been fatal crashes, and again, it's been monitored. How the, uh, how the corridor is being um, observed now, some of the uh, features, speed control features which were in place have been removed, so the deaths are back. So overall, then, I'd like to just con conclude with investments in transport infrastructure has resulted in increase in fatal crashes and in especially increasing risk to pedestrians, both highways and more disturbingly inside the cities. Regardless of city size and density, fatality rate has increased in the last decade in most cities. An appropriate infrastructure design, which is what I tried to show you very quickly in the third one, pedestrian bicycle facilities speed control measures can have a major impact on fatal crashes. Thank you.